In this question, we're going to solve a, another problem that will slowly lead us up towards computing the covariance and correlation coefficients for a portfolio um, of composed of two assets. But in the meantime, we've got to deal with the standard deviation of those asset or portfolio returns. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the problem we are solving. It's one which I already introduced in the previous question. Um, let me remind you, and if you didn't watch that one, I suggest you do. I suggest you watch the previous question where we solved for the expected return on the two assets um, which are uh, discussed here. The following joint probability table is given for the returns on two assets A and B, which make up an investment portfolio in the proportions 70 and 30% respectively. And you've got the possible returns for uh, A, the possible returns for B, and the probabilities over here, 30%, 50%, and 20% of those returns happening. It's a joint probability table because we've got um, the probability of uh, one asset taking on a certain value and at the same time another one taking a different uh, its own kind of set of values uh, in this problem we're asked for the standard deviations um, of assets a and b's returns and um, in order to compute this we'll still need what we did in the previous question that was the expected returns for a and b so i wrote these out over here it's something that we sold for in um, in the in the prior recording and now we're going to use it to compute standard deviation and in the next question i'm going to use that to compute covariance and correlation in order to compute standard deviation you've got to start with variance and the formula that you're going to use or the, for the variance of x, um, x being either, in this case, the returns on A or returns on B. We're going to plug those in in just a moment. Or if you prefer to use the uh, the other notation, that's going to be sigma, sigma squared, where sigma is standard deviation, variance is sigma squared, um, is going to be given as the expected value. So we're going to use probabilities of, let me open up a square bracket, and um, within that, another bracket, x minus the expected value of x, close bracket, close this one, and actually, I'm missing one more bit here, the power of 2, which uh, maybe I made a little bit too small, but it's here, let me put it in a in a little uh, in a little circle to accentuate the fact that it's there so how do we apply this formula well let's start with a okay and for that one i'm going to use this color a what we're going to do is create um a set of three computations because there are three possible values that a may take on and for each one we're going to use the relevant probability so like for the first one 0 0.3 0 0.3, which takes, takes care of the probability weighing, because this is going to be an expected value of whatever is the value taken by A, the first one, 0 0.1, minus its expected value or expected return, which is naturally this 0 0.49. And uh, we're going to square this because, as you may remember, if you don't do the squaring when computing um, standard deviation or, you know, variance measures, if you don't square the differences away from the mean, you know, this is the mean or the expected value, and that's a specific uh, observation or a specific value that the variable may take on, you'll get as a value of zero, simply. Now, um, to this, we add the next one, the next observation, which is 0.4%, or the next expected uh, possible value, um, has a probability of occurring of 50%. So that's 0 0.5 times, once again, that value, which is 0 0.4, um, I'm omitting the percent, uh, minus uh, 0 0.49 again, because this, you know, we always deduct the expected return, which is constantly 0 0.49. And we square that one. For the third one, we're simply going to have whatever is left, uh, a probability of 0 0.2 times, open bracket, um, the value that 
we see over here, 1.3 minus 0 0.49 squared again. As you can see, this 0 0.49 keeps appearing um, absolutely all the time. Now, before I take my calculator, before I plug it in, let me do the same thing in respect of uh, asset B. So use the same concept for B. Start with the probability there is a 30% or 0 0.3 probability that B will take on the first value. That's a negative um, 1.3. And obviously that minus its um, expected return is 2.37. Square that. Plus 0 0.5 times um, this value, 2.4 minus the expected value of 2.37. So as you can see, this 2.37 is consistently being taken from um, what we already computed in the previous question. And the final one would be um, with a probability of 0 0.2, B can take on a level of 7.8%, still minus that 2.37 to the power of 2. Um, and before I fire up my calculator and perform these computations, let me emphasize that because what we've got in the brackets here is uh, expressed in percentages, we will get, which is quite characteristic for variance, at least the variance of portfolio or asset returns, a result which is also expressed in percentages, but squared. Okay, let's go to the calculator. So uh, let's just key these in. I'm going to use brackets to compute, uh, well, the terms in the brackets and the squaring function, so x squared. But other than that, I'll try to go in the same order as things are written out here because I have, let me emphasize again, my calculator set up to handle uh, operations under AOS or algebraic operating system mode. So 0 0.3 times open bracket 0 0.1 minus 0 0.3. 49 close bracket square this okay plus 0 0.5 times open bracket 0 0.4 minus 0 0.49 close bracket square plus 0 0.2 times open bracket 1.3 minus 0 0.49 close bracket square it equals and we've got a a, a sum over here and uh, you know that sum seems to be 0 0.1809 and this is in percentages squared um, let's uh, remember that this is the variance whereas the question actually asked us for the um, standard deviation and standard deviation naturally is um, just uh, so you know standard deviation is uh, simply the variance whatever variance was uh, the square root of that simply so as I've got the um, answer right now on my calculator, let me just simply press the key with uh, square root on it. Okay, and I can see that the standard deviation comes in at, for portfolio A, or asset A, sorry, 0.425%. And I guess this alone would allow me to solve the question because I can see immediately from the possible answers to that to this one that it would be uh, B. I mean, that's uh, that's visible straight away and I don't need to solve any more. Please also appreciate that this answer, 0 0.1809, kind of rounded appeared as answer A, uh, which was a which was a false one. Uh, it's uh, it wouldn't be answer A because that, you know, that gives this gives you variance, not standard deviation. Let's now quickly do the relevant computations for asset B, 0 0.3 times open bracket 1.3, make it negative, minus 2.37, close bracket square, plus 0 0.5 times open bracket 2.4, minus 2.37, close bracket square it, plus 0 0.2 times open bracket 7.8, minus 2.37 close bracket square it equals now once again this is the variance that we've just computed here so it's 9.9381 and this is in percent squared and in order to turn it into a standard deviation result 
we need to just hit the square root button and that gives 3.152%, which is um, once again, absolutely in line with the answer we've already marked, answer B. Um, so that confirms B is the solution.